In today's video, we will be taking a look at the 2020 midterm election results on day two of this critical election cycle. We will be taking a look at the Senate, House, and Governor elections, as well as some of the live ballot initiative results. I'm going to start off with the Senate here because this is the most interesting branch of Congress that's a lot for us to cover. We'll start off with the first uncalled state, the state of Nevada. Currently, Adam Laxalt has about a 20,000 vote edge over incumbent Democrat Kevin Cortez Masto. It looks like that Masto is trailing by about 2.2% or 19,200 votes. 19,300 votes. Now, looking at this, she needs, first of all, to flip Washoe County. We expect there is still about 65,000 votes from that county alone. Which means that she, if she wants to flip this county, she can gain about 5,000 votes. Theoretically, if she is not able to flip this county, it will look very difficult for her, as there's still a little bit of vote from the rural areas, which means she will have to make up about a 22,000 vote gap in Clark County, which is quite difficult. We'll get to that in a bit. Anyways, if she is able to flip Washoe County and gain about 5,000 votes from that county, her math looks a little bit easier, as there's not much vote from the rural areas. She just needs 15,000 from Clark County. Now, our best estimate is that there's about going to be about 75,000 votes left in Clark County to be counted, as, as votes that are postmarked by Election Day can still come in a couple days after um, the uh, actual election, which means that if you postmark your election day, uh, your mail-in ballot, the day before November 7th, on November 7th, or several days before that date, and the ballot r arrives after election day, they can still be counted. We currently have about 40,000 votes that arrived, mail-in ballots that were not counted, that have arrived before election day. And we're not really sure about that other branch those that are postmarked by or before election day, that has yet to be uh, came in, but can still be counted. But we're assuming there's around 35,000 votes of that kind, in which this case, this race will be hair-raisingly close, as those mail-in ballots are likely going to favor Calvin Cortez Masto by about 15 percentage points, which should that hit her just around, just about enough votes to break even. So we're not really quite sure about this race. This remains anyone's game. Now going to the state of Arizona, with Mark Kelly and Blake Masters. Kelly seems to still be the favorite in this race, given that there's only 30% of the vote votes left, and she, he's leading by still more than 95,000 votes. There's still two batches of strong amount of votes left, Maricopa and Pima. This is where basically all the residents of the state lives. The first county is Maricopa County. Mark Kelly's lead on, on initial on election night in this county before really much of the in um, in person votes came in his lead was close to 20 percent in this county however the, his margin narrowed down to just eight percent currently speaking with the county and there's still a ton of votes left to come in there's still about 250,000 to 300,000 votes that are yet to come in, in Maricopa County so assuming there's 300,000 how much does Blake Masters lead, need? Well, he's assuming that there's still some vote from the remainder of the state, in which it looks like there is. He should be able to catch up by about 20,000 votes in some of the rural counties. And look at Pima. Pima, Blake Masters needs to at least break even. Because if Mark Kelly catches up at all in Pima County, this is going to look very bad for Blake Masters, as then he simply cannot make up the math. Let's just ignore Pima, Pima County for now and say that um, you say that Blake Masters can net 20,000 votes from the remainder of the state. Well, for Maricopa, that means out of the 300,000 votes left, he needs about 75,000 votes of a lead. So he needs to win the, win the county by about by a margin of about 62 to 37. That is quite difficult for Blake Masters, as even the election day vote that's currently coming seems to not be favorable enough for him. But, we'll, but in the end, we'll have to see because we're not quite sure yet. Nonetheless, it still looks quite difficult, but he should at least be able to close most of the gap. Now go to Alaska. Alaska is more interesting because we don't really have 
like a county map or anything. But we know that County Shabaka and Lisa Murkowski are two front runners with 80% of the votes in. Pat Chesper, the Democrat, is trailing at third place, and he, she doesn't definitely doesn't have much chance. But looks like that Kelly Shabaka is leading by about 3,000 votes. The problem with Alaska is that Kelly Shabaka is very likely to win the first round, but then Pat Chesper's votes will likely go will have about 80 to 90 percent that goes to Lisa Murkowski. Then Kelly Shabaka will end up losing because. It's very hard for her to like gain a lot of votes. While past Chespo bro, most of their voters will likely support Lisa Murkowski over someone like Kelly Shabaka, who's more far right. Thus, Lisa Murkowski is likely to win this race. That's just the end of conversation. The final state is the state of Georgia, where Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker is going to a runoff. Assuming that right now things hold where as where where we are. Alaska goes to a Republican, whoever the Republican is. Adam Laxalt wins Nevada, as he's leading there, and Mark Kelly wins Arizona. That means it's going to be 49-50 in favor of the Republicans. However, the Senate control will come down to the state of Georgia yet again, because if it's 50-50, Dem Democrat Vice President Kamala Harris gets to break the tie. Thus, it looks like that Raphael Warnock this race will might actually go to a runoff election in which it could decide the Senate control yet again, which will be really interesting to watch, as that can prove that history does repeat itself. Regardless of that, let's just move on. So the next elections we're going to take a look at is the governor elections. For South for Arizona, it's going to be very, very difficult for Katie Hobbs to not lose to Kerry Lake. We've already explained that in the Senate level, Mark Kelly's lead is likely to shrink by more than half. He's only going to win by probably around 2-3% to 3 at max. He's probably going to win by around 2. That's my guess at this point. <laughs> so we plug those numbers in. We suggest that Kerry Lake rises by 3% around that margin, which means that Kerry Lake will win by about 1.5%. As this will likely be a split ticket bill, we have the Democrats winning the Senate and Republicans winning the Governors. Because it looks like that Katie Hobbs, for example, is only leading Maricopa by four, the largest county by far, and Mark Kelly is leading by eight. So we do see an underperformance on Katie Hobbs' side. Now going to this, uh, now going to some of these races here. Georgia, uh, Brad Kemp is not going to be forced to a runoff, as he is defeats Stacey Abrams. Kansas Laura Kelly yesterday was not projected. EPA projected it for a long time ago. But Lauren Kelly has officially been projected the winner by the New York Times as he defeats she, she defeats Terry Schmidt, the Republican endorsed by Donald Trump. Main here, Janet Mills went won by a comfortable 12 point margin. Michigan Gretchen Whitmer also won by a comfortable 10 point margin in the state of Michigan. A very good performance for her. Nevada, it does seem like that Joe Lombardo has won. In fact, in EPA's Discord server, which will be linked in the pinned comments, Joe Lombardo has been projected by EPA the winner of Nevada. Now, <coughs> that is a apparent winner projection, but Steve Sislak looks very hard to win, as she, he has to catch up about a 38,000 vote deficit instead of 20,000. And he's only leading by Clark County by three, with 88% of their estimated votes in. Not good for him. New Mexico go went to Michelle M. Grisham. Not that much of a surprise. New York went to Hat Kathy Hoko. This was a very close race. This definitely impacted the House elections. We'll take a look at that in a bit. And for Oregon, Tina Kotak looks like that he he will defeat that. Uh, Republican Christian Dazen and independent Beastie Johnson. Beastie Johnson not doing as well as I expected her to, so this doesn't look good for the Republicans. I expect this race to be called for the Democrats so soon in this race. We'll have to see, okay? So for the state of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro uh, has defeated Doug Mastriano. This was not much of a surprise. Texas Greg Abbott defeated Beto O'Rourke, not much of a surprise. Tony Evers did defeat with, uh, to Michaels, a race I focused on last video, linked down in the pink comments. 
So most of these races were explained to me, explained in depth on my last video, so I'm not going to explain it in depth this time. We're going to focus on uncalled races. So for the U.S. House of Luck, House of Representatives election results, we still have about 200. We still have about uh, three dozen seats uncalled. So what is left? Now most of these races are already called by EPAA. EPA has the Democrats at 201 and Republicans at 214. Um, the New York Times is just slow. It, there's no reason why they're not calling, for example, Van Hole, someone who's leading by 8% in a district that's 80% reported, to not be called. I also don't understand why the New York Times doesn't call races in which there's not even a Republican in, and the Democrats are uh, one well, of their candidates are ahead by 16. It doesn't. Ma it does not make sense. Go to a race like. Uh, California's 46, Democrats are ahead by a safe margin. Um, New York Times hasn't called it. So EPA has called all of those races, and that brings the Democrats to, to 201 and Republicans to 214. With some in interesting races that are left, um, two districts in Washington are quite interesting. Those two races are very much needed on the Democratic Party's behalf if they want to win the House of Representatives. Let's go to the state of Washington. So for the state of Washington, Right here, Democrats desperately need both of those races. One of them, I do think they're going to get District 8. <coughs> Democratic incumbent there looks like he's going to win. He's leading by 5% in that race. And this dis uh, district has a significant amount of King County, or basically where Seattle is located at. There are some Republican counties, there are four Republican counties. But none of them are Republican by a huge amount, so Democrats are expected to win this district based on the current results. Now, the other seat is quite interesting. This will help if Democrats are able to end up winning this district, then they could actually win the House. The Democrat there is leading by 5%, but it's unlikely they're going to hold this lead given that it's a 10,000 vote plus lead, sure, but um, there's still some of the vote from the Republican counties. And it definitely looks like that Clark County, where Democrats have a lot of their core base in, there's still some election day vote that is yet to be counted. However, there's still a lot of hope on the Democrats' end, because all all mail-in ballots that are, right, uh, that are postmarked by election day, which means that it could be posted on November 7th, November 6th, or any day before November 7th, can still be counted even if it arrives late. So even if it's arrived... Even if a ballot that's postmarked on November 6th or November 7th, if it ends up getting rolled in and get, gets received on November 11th, it can still be counted. Uh, basically meaning that it can it can be three weeks late. So it can be technically November 27th when you receive that ballot. And it can still be counted towards a candidate, which is going to favor the Democrats. In that sense, it does look like that Democrats do have a shot in this race, but Republicans are definitely favored. If Republicans win that seat, then it's going to look good for the Republican Party. So the important races here, I've called the Bounders 4th and the Bounders 1st for the Democratic Party party in their respective seats. The Bounders 3rd will be crucial for Democrats. Susan Lee, if this race flips, Democrats are game over. Democrats also desperately need two seats, California's 27th and 22nd, both held by Republican incumbents, but they are in um, Biden plus 10 seats or so, and the most, uh, but they are popular incumbents, so we have to see, California's going to take about a week to count <coughs> most of their ballots, so we probably won't get much many ideas until at least another week. I'm going to skip that. So. New York is where Republicans got saved. Republicans gained four seats. District 19, District 17, Sean Patrick Midloney. <coughs> this was a very surprising flip. Democrats lost that seat. Democrats also lost two seats in New York's 4th District and New York's 3rd District. Democrats are not expected to flip the 22nd. Though Pat Ryan, by EPA's projection, the Democrat there has won. Though New York's 22nd, I, EPA has also projected that the Republicans have won, so 
as of right now it's 201 to 214. My best bet at this point is that it could be 214 to 2 um to 2 what 214 to 2 121. That's my best bet at this point. But I don't really know. So let's go to the um let's go to some of the ballot measures because those races also need to be covered. The first one is abortion and health care. A really large issue because the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, <laughs> overturned Roe versus Wade, which is probably why um, Republic, the Republican Wade did not happen. California did obviously approve the right to abortion. That's no surprise there. Kentucky, the right removed right to abortion has failed. Um, EPA projected that a long time ago. But the uh, New York Times took a while, and NBC News also took a while. The Michigan right to abortion passed also with 56.7% of the vote. Not, not much of a surprise. Again, Democratic counties and more competitive counties, such as Grand Rapids, uh, Signal, Isabella, and all those counties also voted for this ballot initiative, which to show that voters typically do support Roe vs. Wade, and Roe vs. Wade was likely why Republicans didn't do as well as expected. Montana required care for infant born alive. This ballot measure failed, which is, again, um, a good thing for pro Roe vs. Wade people, because, as you can see, the areas that voted against it, Missouri was one of the huge areas. Yasa voted against it. You say Clark Park voted against it, so we're <laughs> Democratic voters were they typically voted against this ballot initiative, which helped the Democrats actually win this race. And looking at some of these races, um, Oregon Universal Healthcare, um, this doesn't look good for GOP because it's currently a yes. Democrats are really banking on Portland for, uh, to help them, as this race. Although this is not, is not such a po um, uh, uh, popular ballot initiative, Democrats definitely did well because there's Portland, which helped them likely at this point win this ballot initiative. Vermont right for reproduced autonomy, this was, a, this was not surprising. Very progressive state has Senator Bernie Sanders, obviously this passed. Arizona proposed to increase voter ID requirements. This raised seemingly a no, but there's still a lot of votes to be counted. So, uh, for the state of Connecticut, this doesn't really matter. They're not a swing state. Michigan expand voting access. <laughs> this, according to EPA's estimate, will probably net the Democrats around 50,000 votes if it did pass in any given election. Looks like it is a yes at this point um, by 60-40. Nevada ranked choice voting in top five primary. Again, a progressive idea, typically supported by Democrats. This ballot initiative will likely pass. Las Vegas largely voted yes. Uh, Marshall also voted yes. Clark is voted yes by 8%. The rural areas are definitely voting no at this point, but it's it's definitely not going to be enough to, it's probably not going to be enough to overturn this ballot initiative, so it's, it definitely seems like that this, this will help the Democratic Party, but we'll have to wait and see. Ohio limit voting for non-citizens, now this obviously did pass. So firearms, amendment right to keep and bear arms, yes. Not surprising whatsoever. Oregon, increased gun ownership requirements, it is the state of Oregon, what do you expect? EPA projected that this, this ballot initiative passed. Now for marijuana. Legalized marijuana, Arkansas, no. That was not surprising. Because it was Arkansas. But Maryland, legalized marijuana, there's a lot of there's a lot of concern within some Maryland um, black voters, African Americans, Hispanic voters, whatever, that there are there could be racial biases in arresting people for drug related crimes. There are also problems re related with uh, personal choice. That's why that passed. Missouri legalized marijuana. This also passed. But for North Dakota, a much more Republican state, it did not pass. South Dakota, <coughs> South Dakota, similar, 
similar measure with much more voters, <coughs> actually, it did not pass. Finally, the minimum wage. Increase the minimum wage in Nevada um, to $12 instead of their current amount, which is not very high. Again, Democratic County is largely voting in favor of this ballot initiative. Oh, is, th is this even the correct ballot initiative? Jeez. Okay, so this is question two. Um, Democrats also voted a yes. Clark County largely supported this ballot initiative. EPA projects this race has passed. This ballot initiative did pass. Then, finally, for sports betting, California legalized sports betting and legalized online sports betting. So that is the end of today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. General kind of um, general kind of summary here. Democrats did not do very well. Uh, Republicans didn't do as well as expected in the Senate. Republicans are not doing that well in the House. I said that they were certain to win that. The House of Representatives, they might even win 240 seats. That's not going to happen. And then for the governors, Democrats also did pretty well. So that's the end of today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.